Hey everyone, welcome back, and today I'm going to do a skill review, and I'm going to get caught up on the warrior. Recently, I was able to capture one of the skills for the warrior that I've been meaning to capture for a very, very long time. Uh, frankly, since I started playing Guild Wars back in 2005, but since I never really mained a warrior character, I never really had a chance to go and capture it until now. <clears throat> the skill is a very good skill. It's an elite skill, and it's in the swordsmanship line, and it's the skill 100 blades. I'm going to slot this right here. So 100 blades, it uses energy. It's 5, five energy at a 25 second recharge, and it's elite skill. But unlike a lot of skills, this is a skill that actually has a duration of about 15 seconds. And for 15 seconds, whenever you attack with a sword, all adjacent foes to your target take 25 slashing damage. And this is at Swordsmanship 15. So this is really one of, if not the only skills in the Swordsmanship line that can do an AOE effect type of damage and it's very very crucial in doing a lot of PvE content especially farming and clearing the rest of the skills in PvE for swordsmanship are really uh, single target skills so elite skills like dragon slash or final thrust even quivering blade uh, silver wing slash standing slash they're all to one single target now I can really take down that one target which is very good but in a more PvE sense, when you're out and about, most of the time, if not all the time, the enemies have a tendency to clump up in one space. And that is great if you're an elementalist, but if you're a warrior, you're going from target to target to target to target, and you're not kind of as effective as a warrior, at least with a sword. Now with the hammer and the axe, the hammer can do... You know, quite a bit of AoE with like such things like Yeti Smash and a few others. And the Axis is great with uh, AoE with its uh, Cyclone Axe. And uh, it it works pretty, pretty well. With the uh, Sword, you're kind of you're out of luck. But 100 Blades really kind of offsets that. And it's actually very, very good. It's, it's not an enchantment. It's a skill, which is nice. Because there's no way to turn this off. Once you... Or your opponent, if they're using the skill, once it's turned on, it's turned on. It's not a stance that can be knocked out. It's not an enchantment that can be stripped. It's just there. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's like the same with uh, a glyph or a shout. There's no way to, uh, to strip that in that case. And it, it doesn't need to be fed with adrenaline, which is another nice thing. So a lot of the other sword attacks, like Dragon Slash, you need 10 adrenaline. For Quivering Blade, you need 5 adrenaline. Uh, even for a Spacious Pair, you need 1 adrenaline, which is not hard to get, but you can't turn it on from the very beginning. And that's something to uh, to keep in mind. Uh, and the Axe line... Actually, I don't have any axes there. So, again, I mostly concentrated on the sword so far, because I... I like I like the weapon. I like its play style, and I just think it looks cool. And when I think of a warrior, I think of a swords swordsman, or in this case, a swordswoman. So here's my warrior Terraza with her new Luxon armor. It looks really cool. And I got her equipped. Now let's see. I got uh, I got actually a whole set of swords here, and this one is one I picked up recently. It's actually a very rare celestial sword. But it does a 15 while enchanted. Now, actually, I'm going to make one small modification. I'm going to switch over to the monk. And I'm going to turn on some enchantment for me. I'm going to take this down. I'm going to prop up, where is it, where is it? smiting prayers. And I'm going to use strength of honor. And let's see, where should I dump this off? And t -t 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 -t. I'm going to dump it off. Uh, I'm Endure Pain or Watch Yourself. You know, what? I'm going to do Watch Yourself. All right, so I'll drop it in there. Now, one nice thing that goes along with 100 Blades, though, is anything that does 
uh, or increases the attack rate. So it'd be really good to actually have a attack speed modifier. So if you go to strength, there's a couple of them here. But the one I generally like uh, out of all of them is Tiger Stance. Of course, you have everyone's favorite, Frenzy. But Frenzy can, can work. Uh, or you can use Tiger Stance. This is six seconds. This is eight seconds. But usually you want to have a cancel stance if you're going to use Frenzy. So just to be safe, I'm going to use Tiger, uh, tiger Stance. And I'm actually, let's see, what's my shield? Okay, I could go down to nine tactics. So I'm gonna drop down tactics a little bit and I'm gonna raise my strength up to 11. So that gives me eight seconds. Also helps with my endure pain. And actually I only have one more tactic skill here, which is Thrill of Victory. Now one more thing I like to add. So I have a AOE, or I'm sorry, a IAS, increased attack speed modifier here with Tiger Stance. There's one more thing that I can do, and that's in the swordsmanship line. I can grab this attack, Sun and Moon Slash, and I'm going to replace it, uh, replace uh, Final Thrust with Sun and Moon Slash. Sun and Moon Slash, it's just really simple. It's the same as what I had done with Dual Shot. You attack twice for eight adrenaline, and there's a lot of things you can do with that, but the same rules I had done with Dual Shot apply with Sun and Moon Slash here, but it synergizes very well with 100 Blades and also synergize, uh, synergizes well with Strength of Honor. So 100 Blades, it'll do that double 25 slashing damage. It will trigger Strength of Honor twice and also works well with, uh, with Tiger Stance because Tiger Stance can ramp up Sun and Moon Slash quite, quite good. And I got Sever Artery, I got Gash, you know, for its classical combo. But one more adjustment I can make here. If I don't want to go for that condition thing, I can use. Uh, no, I was thinking of using Standy Slash to go with Tiger Stance, but if I'm going to use my adrenaline, I'm going to use it for that uh, Sun and Moon Slash. So here we go. I'm going to turn on hard mode and. I'm out here in, uh, I think, by Paasu Reach. And of course, it's under cursor controls. So I can't really get any blessings here. But again, for demonstration purposes, this will work really, really well. So here I am. And again, there's a lot of uh, Rot Wallows and Island Guardians, same as you saw before with my Shatterstone video. It's just in a different area. So, Okay, so I have my sword. Again, plus 15% when enchanted. So let's turn on my enchantment. There we go. So I got a plus 15% damage increase, plus my strength of honor. And it is also customized myself. Well, it's now 20%. And we're ready to go. And the application of this is pretty straightforward. And this is what makes it so strong for PvE is it's not really like a timed skill like a lot of the other skills that a, a warrior uses. This one you just turn on and you go to town. Okay, so we got some Nagas here. Let's take out this Naga patrol. Sneak up behind him here. And here we go. Now this one's alone, so he's not really give me uh, effect here but yeeks and boom there's the sun and moon slash so that works really well yeah. so these guys didn't really clump up it's okay so we can take on now this island guardian uses what is it See shockwave. You might use shockwave, so I want to be careful with this guy. I know he he can hit pretty hard, but he has a lot of rot walls that yeah, buy him. So I'll park my group here and just see if I can get some aggro and pull. Okay, I pulled them into each other. All right, well, okay. Here we go. 
Turn on 100 blades. I'm going to go out for the rot waddles. Here we go. And oh, wow. I think that was Shockwave that <laughs> did that. But you can see, you know, the 13, 13. And down I go. Oh, boy. Yeah, that was Shockwave. <laughs> Pretty much a nice skill to insta kill your whole team. We'll pop up here in just a second. There we go. And let's see, where am I? I'm well on the bottom side of the map, okay. Well, let's go do something else. All right, so once again, oh yeah, that's right. I got the lost eggs mission on here, stolen eggs. Uh, let's just kind of skip past this. Get the guys turned on. Okay. Yeah, look at the numbers fly out. That is where it really shines. Okay, and try to see where your groups are in a pack. Slash. And there we go. Yep. And we'll take out this. And down he goes. Okay. So there you saw a pretty good demonstration when you saw those numbers flap, especially with the the ritualist spirit. Where the adjacent damage was really starting to show up and again combining that with tiger stance and then combining that with sun and moon slash you can crank out a lot of damage very very quickly the only thing is is that as you can see here because i have strength of honor on the energy rege regeneration is down pretty low and both hundred blades and tiger stance requires energy to activate uh, let's see, is this my... Oh, yeah, there's that boss again. But you know what? I'm going to swing around. and Because that guy's a separate ag aggro than these other guys. And Shockwave is a nasty, nasty spell to go up against in hard mode. So let's just see here. Uh, let's see if I can just move... Get some aggro. Okay, looks like we got it. Okay. Yep, there's numbers. Let's get some moon slash. Boom! There we go. Healer is. What she's doing. Too many there. One die. Mm -hmm. Quite a few. There's three left. And they just kind of. There was, just, I think, too many. They just kind of ganged up on my, uh, on my poor group here. Here we go again. Okay. So basically, I'm, I'm just going to head back to Bypasser Reach. So 
anyways, uh, <laughs> even though I my group kind of kind of died, that's what I wanted to show there was just the numbers coming up with 100 blades, sun and moon slash, and an IS. You can actually crank out a lot of damage in a small area. And since those rot walls like to clump up, that works really well against them. Of course, unless you have too many or you get hit with something like shockwave. So. I'm going to head out here again. I think we'll have a little better luck going uh, this way because there's not that, that boss there. But again, as I mentioned, you know, this is a uh, four warrior. This is not energy cheap because you got five here, five there, and you're going to run with that. So, okay. So we got another group up here. Let's just see if mine. My own group will be any good or not. And here we go. Thirteen, twenty-five. And boom, there's those numbers. Yeah, there we go. On. There you go. There you go. Things rolling again. Send a slash. Boom. There we go again. And there's the AOE effect. And that is the normal knockdown. down. Still got weakened knees, so that's kind of hurting. Alright, there we go. That went a lot better. But you saw the combo there. Again, 100, bl 100 blades. Turning on Tiger Stance, IAS. And then hitting with Sun and Moon Slash. And it works really, really well. Particularly with any other kind of magical enchantments that, that can work, such as strength of honor or if you have a fire sword or elemental sword you can use the conjure weapons such as conjure flame conjure frost things like that that will all work again with with sun and moon slash uh, but with 100 blades again you just saw it explode and all that adds up with uh, with 100 blades and it works really really well with enemies that clump up like those rottweilers so anyways that's what i wanted to show uh, this is a this is a skill any warrior that does PVE should grab, uh, especially if you want to use a sword, because this can make life a whole lot easier in going through massed enemies that are clumped up. Uh, again, it doesn't do a ton of it's not going to do any single target damage on one particular target. So against bosses, eh, it doesn't really work unless of course they have a lot of sub foes around them. But uh, with 95% of just the kind of trash mobs you're going to encounter, it works really well. So anyways, I'm going to leave it here. Uh, again, for Warriors, they probably already know this, but it's great to try out, and it's a great way to crank up some AoE damage on a Warrior uh, rather than being strictly single target. So anyways, try it out. Again, I was able to grab it from, a I think, the Warrior Construct uh, in the Sunjing mission and I was able to grab it for him or you can get the spoiler related boss in the Prophecies campaign which is, is right towards the end. So if you want to get this skill not quickly it, but around at least the midpoint of your campaign, again the, the factions campaign is the easiest way to, to probably get it. Uh, with prophecies is at the very very end of the campaign uh, until you can get it. Of course, you can always unlock it with uh, using the elite Balthazar faction and then using the elite tome. That is always viable, but again, that's viable with any elite skill. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great weekend coming up here, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.